I want to go back to your first season. Uh, you once told me in an interview for the uh, for the PropWorks um, catalogs the story about the armbands, the Atonique armbands from season four's upgrades. Yeah. Tell me about yes. the process of, it, 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 can we use them as a case study for something that you have to refine on the go? Would you mind sharing that story? The armbands for upgrades. Yeah, that was, uh, that <laughs> was my first uh, <laughs> challenging experience on set again. Um, translating a, a, a prop that started off as a as an idea and then a photo to an actual feasible prop that you know these uh, our actors would wear. Sometimes we didn't have a lot of time to test things, right? Uh, or your your test uh, your test was basically the first day of camera. So uh, with these uh, armbands uh, supposed to give our you know our characters powers, alien powers that would increase their strength and their speed. And um, they looked pretty, they were great, but they just, uh, they weren't made to to be, you know, worn more than just holding your arm like that or holding your arm straight out. Because uh, I remember we were doing a rehearsal and Rick just made a gesture like that to point in his arm and the thing flew right off his arm across the room. And all I could do is, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, again. But I mean, you have to find a way. So what we tried to do, um, and it was they had an electrical source on it, right? They had a power source on the side. So at first we had to hardwire it, and uh, you know, I mean, one of the first scenes that was with Rick uh, on set, and it was we were up in the I think the first scene that we ever played it. It was up in the, um, uh, it was up in the, uh, was it in the? Uh, it wasn't in the control room. It was a briefing room. It was up in the briefing room, and. Uh, we had to literally hardwire, it was hardwired down his arm, up, up his shoulders, down to his leg, and I had the control for it to keep it, to keep the, the, the tracer going. And then it's the point I just wired out, and then I was like, okay, it's too much wire. It's, uh, we'd have to figure it out on set. Just, okay, well, how are we gonna do this? Well, cut the wire. We made the connection shorter to go from the actual uh, LED to the battery, and we made it a bit bulkier but then at least he was able to turn it on and off himself. And there was the, you know, no more hardware. I was like, okay, phew, there's one problem. But then it was the fact that it uh, it didn't have much memory, so it wouldn't cling on to their arms. So any sudden movement and it would fly off. So literally in between takes, I had to figure out what to do. And we were actually keeping them cooled in a, um, a cooler. I had elastics around them to keep them you know, in the shape that we needed them to be and uh, keep them cool. And it it worked as long as it worked. But uh, yeah, it was the whole episode was a challenge. And actually, that's where I got my nickname from. Yes. Okay. So Evil Kenny, I wanted to know about the moniker, where that came from. So that was this. Well, uh, that was that was from that episode. It was from this, that prop. Um, it was uh, actually, again, speaking of people that uh, who treated me like family from day one, it was Martin Wood. Martin Wood uh, still is one of the most influential people that I've, that I've met during film. Um, I love the guy. He's, uh, yeah, he's still close to my, you know, did a film with him a couple of years ago, went to Guam with him just to, just to be with him. Um, anyways, Martin did that episode. And he saw the struggles, he knew. And he, again, he's the kind of director who's like, he'll always try to help you and always try to, you know, get the most out of not just his actors, but his crew. So uh, what had happened is that we had a couple uh, incarnations of, of this prop and what it had to do at the end, uh, we built a mechanical one that would actually just, because, um, uh, okay, sorry, the whole premise of the prop is once it was on their arm, uh, the alien technology would not let go. So we had to find a way to make it let go. And when we when when uh, to 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 show this on camera, we built a separate model that was just mechanical that would just basically open up like a clamshell. So I said, okay, well, we got this one because you know, come on, sure. So um, we brought in the prop, or I brought in the prop, uh, put it on the floor. We were getting ready for the shot, and then 
he said, okay, just uh, cameras rolling when, whenever you're ready, Kenny. I said, okay, let's go. And I flicked the switch and nothing happened. Oh. And then I said, okay, let's reset. And I switch off and I flicked the switch and nothing happened. And I just gave up. I just dropped the remote and I walked away. And everybody, you know, they're good hearted. They started laughing. Then it's okay. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I said, like, uh, okay, we'll try it again. We'll, we'll just get our, our builders in here and then figure it out. And then Martin was just trying to lighten the mood. And he goes, okay, evil Kenny, evil Kenny, bring in that evil prop of yours. Bring in that evil prop of yours again. Let's try it again. So after that, I became evil Kenny. Ah, uh, you know, it's. You are <laughs> you are faced with challenges in your life, some of them professional, some of them personal, where you come down to the wire and you have no choice but to get through it. You have no choice. There are thousands of dollars now riding on you because you are the one who is has got to get this thing pushed up the hill and it's got to happen. You can't just say, OK, mm -hmm. everyone go home. You know, Kenny, Kenny can figure it out overnight. Uh, you've got to get it done. Uh, you, you have minutes. And wow, man, that's just extraordinary. That's that's wild. And you're dealing with something that's electronic and and form fitting on on a, a, a person's where, where a, a person can flex. And just like like you said, like you said, you have to get it to work just as long as it's on camera and then it doesn't need to work anymore. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of R and D involved and, you know, again, um, that was probably one of the rare times it didn't work. Uh, one of our props failed because like I said, we do have a super talented model shop that we did. And, uh, yeah, it was one of the rare times that, uh, a prop, um, I, I actually, I think that was the season that, uh, and, and I'll remember this Gord. Uh, I think that was actually the season that Gord Bellamy went off to do a feature. He was, uh, he was taken away to the feature world for a little while. So, okay. um, we lost his input on props like that for about a season, but uh, we got him back. We got him back, and we got we we got back on the road. Wow, that's just extraordinary. Do you have uh, any other memories of specific uh, props from that production? That's the. I mean, I am blessed to have. That's a replica of of that um, okay. Naquita reactor, but it's it's all based on just visual. Uh, no measurements, um, but do you have you have any memories of some of, of of the props from the show over the years? Some that, you know, you just love to work with, or you thought was a cool idea. Um, I'm I'm curious to know what your favorites were. Well, out of the hundreds, back in the early days, but that out of the hundreds, yeah, uh, the the Naquid reactor was one of them, definitely. Um, um, we uh, dealt with a lot of the alien props, dealing with the uh, Chris Judge's props, uh, you know, the Jaffa, the uh, the blasters and the uh, Zats. Um, but I think but when we got into the uh, later days and uh, we had the uh, replica blasters, those uh, those were really cool guns. Those were really uh, we did a great job uh, engineering those, and uh, they they were pretty good. They were really cool. You talking about the silver ones with the with the the switch that would drop. Uh, or the mouth that would drop down on it. Yes. Yeah, those were metal. Yeah. Absolutely glorious. Right. Yeah, we had CNC machines. We had all the we had all the tools. We had all the tools at our disposal to to make anything we needed. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel, or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.